Hey guys, welcome back to Overhead Athletics. I'm Max Wardell. Today I'm joined by Griffin. Griffin's one of the uh, studs here going into his senior year and we're working on his throwing mechanics from a catcher's perspective now. Some things about the mechanics change when you're going from catching even to the field or to pitching. And the reason for that is there's different demands and constraints on a catcher. First of all, they're starting from a low crouch. They have to adjust for pitches and then they have to throw it around batters and different things like that. But I think the majority of mechanical inefficiency in catchers comes from a couple things. And we could talk about arm action all day long and I think that's really important, but that's something we could address in another video. Today I wanna to talk about some things that happen with throwing mechanics for catchers that are often the result of their position and the demands of their position mainly coming from a crouch, but also from some of the drills that we often prescribe to our catchers that maybe result in some compensations that we don't wanna see. One of the big ones here, as you can see in this slow motion clip on the screen, is where athletes don't adequately load into their hip and flex forward as they begin to go to the target. So we've worked with uh, Griffin on this a little bit. He's doing a great job. And, and he's working through that over time. But one thing we like to do to start with with our catchers is take them away from that crouch position. One of the big things about that crouch is, Griffin, if you go into a crouch, he starts in a lot of knee flexion. Now, if he pops up, what can often happen is that he stays bent down in the knee, so squat down. I want to show you the wrong way. So they, they squat down because we've always told them to stay low. Their upper body's upright, but their knee is really flexed. That doesn't allow them to utilize this glute nearly the way they should to make the ball go as fast as possible. So what ends up happening is, just like you saw in that slow motion clip, the hips drift forward, the knee continues to flex, and they kind of lean off and away from the target, which you'll see catchers masks flipping all the way around their face. That to a large extent is due to them deviating way too far into extension early in the throw and not adequately loading the glute. The hip hinge is very important for loading the glute. It's more difficult for our catchers to get into that position. So the first thing we like to do is take them out of that position. I'm gonna have you go kind of in that athletic stance, hinged forward. So instead of a squat, I actually have Griffin hinge pretty far forward here. Now from there, I just have him keep that hinge as he throws. So stay, stay low and go. Now if I start to see that he's staying low, but he's not actually staying low through a good adequate hip hinge, there's a couple things we can do. As a coach, I can take something, I've got a Swiffer here, but you could take a, a PVC pipe or something and say, stay below this. But I've actually got it, go, go. I've actually got it pre-positioned behind his back. So if we show sideways here, Griffin, so go ahead and, yep, right there. So if he's throwing the opposite direction now, I've actually got it behind his back. So instead of over his head to try to get him to stay low this way, I try to get him to stay low by flexing forward. If he extends and comes back, he'll hit the pipe. So that's just a little cue that we'll give guys in the beginning. These cues are, are great early on to get catchers to move in a slightly different fashion and kind of break that mold. Then I'll take that away and I'll just have him do throws from here. Go. Yep, that a boy. We'll often get told, well, that's a little bit of uh, decontextualization. You're taking the, the, the skill out of context. And, and indeed, in some ways I am. However, if I have all of my context, all of my uh, specificity, if I have him trying to work on his throw in a game-like scenario, it's gonna be very difficult to break through some of these more persistent and nagging kind of biomechanical inefficiencies where, You'll see athletes who have moved in a certain way for a really long period of time, it's hard to break that mold. So sometimes we gotta take them away from the environment they've been in, teach them a little bit of a new pathway. Once we've done that, we can do a similar thing to try to get rid of that excessive knee bend. And now all I'm doing is placing a foam roller about six inches inside of his front foot. So if his knee bends too much, he'll knock it down. So we're trying to get him away from excessive knee bend. We're trying to teach him now to load that hip a little bit more in a hip hinge. 
Essentially, all we're doing is we're removing degrees of freedom. We're, we're taking things away. We're constraining him a little bit. We're putting him into a uh, scenario where he doesn't have as many options. So he has to move in a, in a fashion more like what we desire. You see, he does a great job of hinging in this particular throw. We've done a little bit of these constraints. He's working on these over the course of time. And these are actually Griffin's homework. So he's familiar with them. Some of the other things we like to do here is we like to try to carry that over to a crouch position to a pop-up. So what I wanna see is just how well can he transfer that over to a pop-up throw. And we'll see, does he stay low because he's flexing down through his knees or does he stay low because he's incorporating a hip hinge as well. Now there's a lot of ways to train a hip hinge in the weight room and with some other, some other tools, but when we're thinking about the throw specifically, one of the best ways to start to train the hip hinge is to force him to stay low in the similar fashion we did before where he can't deviate back. You saw that, now here's it with the full throw. This is a very easy technique that anyone can do. Basically, I'm holding it about shoulder height, just behind his back as if he were going forward and go, good. The other thing we like to do, once we've done a bit of that, is we like to incorporate different dynamic throws, particularly crow hops where he actually has to step behind because when he step behind, steps behind, that makes him flex forward a little bit. Step in front crow hop, you're gonna be more upright. So we like to incorporate some step behind crow hops for this. Yep, now I want you to increase your speed a little bit as you go. Good, so a nice step behind. Okay, make it athletic now. I want, I want some, you know, I want, I want you moving a little bit. So get behind and go. And you'll notice right away when athletes throw from a crow hop step behind throw, they naturally start to move in a little bit better fashion. So we constrain them initially with either putting a roll on the inside of their back knee so they can't come through it with their knee by flexing forward. Then we have the athlete constrained by flexing forward. Then we can give them some more dynamic throws like the crow hop and that's our three most simple or our three simplest techniques to actually improve our catcher's throw and get them to load a little bit better through that back hip which teaches them to load more efficiently throughout the entire throwing motion. So let's see that crouch throw one more time. Beautiful. And that was probably his best one of the day. Three things there, really four if you think about the staying forward from, from the actual crouch throw. But three techniques, we use those all the time with our catchers and we suggest that our coaches go out there and use those with their catching athletes as well as opposed to the, the old school just stay low, squat down, squat down techniques which sometimes disrupt how you load your pelvis. Now there's a lot of things that we do to teach athletes a better hinge in the throw, a better hip hinge. These are just some of the techniques that we specifically use with catchers. I do wanna to put together an entire video on hip hinge techniques. I think that you guys would enjoy that. So if you guys would, comment down below. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in and I'll plan on putting that together. But as of right now, try out these catcher drills, hit the thumbs up, and we will see you guys in the next video.